How are you guys doing today? Hey, doing great. Thanks for having us. Worst case scenario survival. This book is so up my alley because I have been preparing for what is happening in this world today. And we need a book like this to plant some seeds to learn more about this thing called survival. Yeah, seeds are important, actually. We do we do talk about stockpiling those a little bit. One of the things for for you to jump into this and to start talking about a survival, because, I mean, you, you obviously you've got a vision of what could be or what has happened in the past. I, I like to journal things and, and put them out there to create a path. How did you guys put this together? Well, we started this is Dave, by the way, we um, we started back in 99 with survival handbooks. Oh. Um this was, you know, when 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 Y2K was about to hit, and we thought the grid was going to shut down for the first time. Uh, it didn't happen then, but it did launch this uh, series and our our uh, careers as experts in survival. But really, we do it on the backs of other experts. We we contact, we imagine the worst situations that we can, whether they're realistic or absurd, and we try to figure out who in the world would know the steps you should take. Um, in general, the principles are pretty much the same, though, for uh, any situation, which is just uh, be prepared, don't panic, and then make a plan. And, and hopefully our book can just give you this presence of mind to at least do those three things in the first place. I'll tell you, one of my biggest fears for the, the modern day society is the fact that they rely so much on their ATM cards and, and you know, doing that, that uh, Apple Pay. Because once something goes wrong, that stuff ain't available. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, and we, we definitely cover that. I mean, in terms of like, you know, what happens if we get to a place where we no longer have like, right, these this this digital economy, right? Money is all digital. So it's, you know, people think, well, you know, I'll hoard gold or I'll have gems. And it's kind of like, well, yeah, maybe for like the first two years. And then when people realize what you need is a barter economy, that stuff's going to be worthless, right? Gold is just ornamental. It doesn't have any intrinsic value. So we do talk about um, you know, one of the things we do talk about in the book is kind of preparing your finances for the, you know, apocalypse and then post apocalypse. The, you know, it, it, it's kind of like a tongue in cheek book. But at the same time, I mean, I was hoping that instead of COVID, I wish that it would have been the zombies. At least we would, you know, we're, we're kind of educated on taking care of zombies in this nation. <laughs> yeah, we could. I mean, it's it's potential that there uh, potentially there could be a viral pandemic that affects the brain in some way and and really turns us rabid uh that's sort of what i would imagine happening in, in a zombie apocalypse more than uh the undead rising but um but uh i mean that was kind of a dress rehearsal i think right covid was certainly killed millions of people but it also could have been a heck of a lot worse and uh we you know hopefully we learned some lessons uh in terms of preparedness for the next pandemic how do you train somebody to basically eat a dead rodent? Because I mean, I mean, I'll eat outdated stuff such as sauerkraut, but man, a dead rodent—I don't know if I if I could go there. Well, I mean, I think you know, sewer rat would probably be pretty low on the list, but you know, there are there are other animals that certainly people eat regularly, right? You could, you know, squirrels have a little nutty flavor, and there's you know, chipmunks, and you know, there's lots of wild animals that are edible. So we do we do cover the preparing you know gutting and preparing skin and gutting and preparing wild animals but also insects and grubs and you know how to how to kind of sustain yourself on some of this stuff that you know may not be your first choice but um you know you can actually get by on you know getting protein from from some of these things this is why i throw a a a bottle of adobo spice in my go bag just in case (laughs) then i've always got good seasoning no matter what it is speaking of that bag what is one thing that we should really have in there or maybe several different things because i'm an rver and and so you know people go oh you go camping no i'm an rver i kind of cheat on nature yeah i'm the same way i actually have a 1989 van again that i've uh, kind of loaded up over the years with uh with adobo seasoning (laughs) adobo seasoning and uh um I mean, I stick by a multi-tool. A Leatherman is obviously going to be a really super useful item in a lot of different ways. Um, but, you know, water, basic basic water is also going to be very important, or, or at least a filtration method for water. And then, um, you know, maybe you, just your essential papers, uh, your, your passport, your passwords, um, any, any uh, logins and, and uh, you know, safety deposit keys, things like that that you uh, – you, you may just be keeping in a file somewhere, uh, might be better off placed in your go bag. 
Am I am I kind of weak in my thinking when I say that uh, a person of homelessness? They're some of the greatest survivors on the planet because I would love to team up with a with a homeless person because they know how to get through the cold. Mm. Right. I mean, part part of it is right. What do you have enough for various types of climate? Right. What if you you know, what if you're forced to depopulate some area or everybody has to move south or move north and, you know, having the right clothes and the, you know, the sur- survival gear to survive multiple different types uh, of climate. I mean, I think some of it, obviously, if you're homeless, it's it's by necessity. And if you have if you have some level of you know preparation, I think you can, um, you know, you can be a little bit better prepared for the unknown. I mean, we talk about trash bags, right? Duct tape, things you can use to build shelter or, or waterproof, you know, items that you have. So, it's, you know, some of these things that they're just simple things that you have around the house and you don't necessarily think that you may be able to use, you know, a coffee filter as a particulate mass for wildfire. So we do talk a lot about things that you have around the house that can be used in survival situations. But I love that. I, what if the, uh, I love the thought that, I think that's a great thought and probably a great premise for uh, a movie or something, you know, that the, uh, the homeless actually become the ones who have all the power post-apocalypse. Mm-hmm. You know, you talk about people on the move, and right away I'm thinking of Gaza as well as I'm thinking of Ukraine, and those people had to replant their lives somewhere in a different country. And, it, and it's like, uh, could we survive something like that? And how could we even get up to a border and try to get across that line if they're saying no? Yeah, I mean, we, we, do, we do cover how to sneak across a border. I did, um, you know, we, we talked to a... Uh, uh, an agent that has done this I was, it will remain nameless but um, told us how you know how to scope out a border how to look for you know proper places to cross how to create distractions I mean again this is kind of getting down to where you're really in a you know in a serious life or death situation and you have to have to cross the border uh, illegally but we also talk about you know how do you how do you immigrate legally so I mean I think there are there are different ways you can do it in a worst case scenario situation. Um, obviously, a lot is going to depend on, you know, if the country is really trying to keep you out, which is, you know, what we see, in, you know, in some of these, you know, these ge- difficult geopolitical situations. Hi, well, I think one of the greatest tools that you talk about in this book, and it's not even a, a man-made tool, except, but it's a self-made tool, and that is learning how to pick yourself up after a, a big change in the moment. You've got to be in control of your emotions and patience. Yeah, I I, I mean, I, like I said uh, earlier, the, the key to surviving, one of the keys is just not panicking. And um, so, yeah, keeping hope alive when uh, it seems hopeless is is an amazing survival skill in and of itself. Um, it'll give you the presence of mind just to take it moment by moment or day by day. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, I, I, I think those kind of mindfulness skills um, things that help you be in the present and break your stress response, physical exercise, in addition to meditation, these things can really break that, uh, that fear, fear reaction, you know, kind of short circuit your hypothalamus and, uh, and, and get you back on track to, to, you know, feeling like maybe you can do something rather than just remain hopeless. Wow. You guys are going to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Arrow. Appreciate Thank that. You. Well, you guys yeah. be brilliant today, okay? You too. Be safe out there. <laughs>